Welcome back. I'm here now with Megan Dotson with the National Weather Service. She's the Beach Hazards uh, Program Coordinator, right? Correct. And we're, it's National uh, Beach Hazards uh, Awareness Week. Megan's here to talk about some of the hazards that await at uh, our Great Lakes shorelines. Right. Megan, what are some of the key things that we should know? Uh, the main thing I would say is just to remember the phrase, know before you go. So know before you go to the beach, um, check the weather service forecast. We have a beach forecast that we do from June 15th through roughly just after Labor Day. Um, and that's going to give you an idea of whether we expect dangerous currents like rip currents or channel currents to form. Um, that gives you an idea of what the wave heights are going to be for that day. And it also uh, basically just helps you make a good decision when you get to the actual beach or maybe you might not go to the beach or just plan to stay out of the water. Um, the second thing is to know when you get to the beach where you should and should not be swimming. You should always be swimming near a lifeguard and you should never swim near break walls or river mouse because that's places where we typically find dangerous currents. And um, the last thing would be just to make sure that uh, you don't swim when you're in the high waves. I would stay out of the water in those conditions. So. Yeah, we've seen, and most folks that know the Great Lakes know, that uh, these waves come at a, fa a higher frequency than waves, say, at the ocean because right. the basin's smaller, right? Yeah, basically, uh, the waves on the Great Lakes are limited by the distance that they move across the lake, whereas the ocean has a much larger distance. So. Um, you know, the waves on the Great Lakes can be very chaotic in nature. It's, it's almost like a washing machine, yeah. so. Okay, so of course folks at home are likely going to be watching TV6 and we'll be sharing that information when uh, there is a beach hazard. How else can folks at home, what are some other media sources uh, for this type of information? Um, well, we have our website that's weather.gov slash MQT. And you can go on the left-hand menu. There's a blue menu on the side, then it'll say beach forecasts uh, if you scroll down to the bottom. And you click on that, and that'll give you our swim risk. It'll be color-coded to either uh, green, yellow, or red, depending on the risk, red being high risk. And that's the best and easiest way to find your information. And if we issue beach hazard statements, um, those are just a little bit more detail on what kind of currents we expect. Those will be on that page as well. That's a very good information to know. Again, that information is all on social media, Facebook and Twitter. Yep. And uh, it's also on their website, which is weather.gov slash MQT. After or on June 15th, we'll be able to click on the left hand side. There's a tab. It's the beach hazards statement. And so that'll be issued right. there. Yep. And of course, uh, you can watch TV6 for more information on that. Uh, what are are there any other keys that we should know? Let's talk about the flag system briefly. Okay. So it's green, yellow, red. Right. And l let's just go over that, outline that. Um, generally, just that when you have, we try to stick to like a stoplight formation. So if you see red, stop and don't go in the water. Generally, we put up the red, they have the red flags up whenever um, either we have a high swim risk out where the waves are going to be dangerous or there was ex currents expected. They also have red flags in places where you should never be swinging, such as picnic rocks, where there's the really strong channel current there has caused numerous drownings in this area. Um, and that's one of the places that they usually always have the double red flags, don't swim there ever. But no. um, otherwise, it's pretty simplistic. If it's a green flag, it means conditions are generally safe, but you still want to make sure you're aware of where you shouldn't be swimming, even when conditions aren't life-threatening in terms yeah, of waves right. and, and most currents forming, you could still get currents near break walls and river mouths. So you want to always stay away from those areas. There you have it. Megan Dodson from the National Weather Service. Yep. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Your TV6 Morning Show. We'll be right back.